Hello everyone. So this is a quick tutorial on how to do a run cycle from start to finish. Uh, I'm going to keep it really, really simple by utilizing some reference from uh, I want to be an animator. And yeah, let's just get right into it. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to open up my, um, create a reference for my rig. So let's go ahead and create a reference. Uh, my references are in my work storage. So let's go ahead and pick a rig. Um, I personally love using the body mechanics rig version two. This is uh, really, really helpful for ironing out body mechanics. It's a much more stable rig in my experience. Um, we have recently noticed that there can be some trouble on the toes. So to combat that, um, rather than use the controllers that are already here, I prefer using the controllers that are on the foot uh, and that makes it a lot easier to, to kind of avoid any errors. So let's go ahead with that. Uh, another friendly reminder, uh, this upper torso is an IK inverse kinematics. I don't want that. So um, this is not how I want to, to kind of animate the body because uh, it's very, very easy for it to get kind of uh, wonky and weird like so. So um, rather than do that, I'm going to click on this controller right here I'm going to turn the FK IK blend into FK, and now I'm animating my character on the FK. So uh, there's nothing necessarily wrong with doing IK. Uh, however, it has led to more problems in my experience. So rather than deal with those problems, I'm just gonna keep it simple and use the FK rig. So now that we're here, next thing I wanna do is, uh, we have a couple options. If you're just starting to animate, what I highly recommend doing is creating a reference. So to do that, I'm going to quickly go to image plane, import image. Make sure, however, you are in the left or right view, depending on the reference you upload. So the reference I'm going to upload is in the left view. So let's go ahead and go to image plane, import image. I'm going to my downloads really quick. I'm going to upload uh, let's see, uh, detail, uh, let's see, that's a walk cycle. It should be down here somewhere. Uh, if not, worst case scenario, that's, that's okay, actually. Um, let me just download it really quick right now. So um, it's incredibly important, <laughs> absolutely important, to make sure that we also have reference when we're doing our animations. The reason being is because you, you don't want to guess. Our brains are notorious uh, for being bad guessers. So um, generally when we look at things, our, our first instinct is to, is to simplify things more than they actually are. So um, you absolutely want to make sure that we're using reference so that our brain doesn't fool ourselves into, um, into imagining things that don't really exist. So um, a good example of that is, you know, just kind of body mechanics in general being a little wonky. So um, just so everyone knows what I just did, I'll do that again really quick. Um, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to view image plane, import image, and I am selecting the image that I have downloaded, um, this being the run cycle reference. Again, shout out to I want to be an animator for providing this reference. Thank you so much. Um, but you know, I, I, when we're looking at this, it's kind of weird when we go into the perspective, you're like, whoa, where did it go? Like, oh, what is it doing over there? So generally speaking, when you import an image, um, when you go back into the left view, it's going to cover your character if not, it will be on the other side when you go in perspective view. Well, what the heck, why is it so far? So um, plain and simple, just uh, you can click on it from the distance or you can go on your outliner. I'm simply going to click on my image plane, call it reference, um, perfect. So there's my reference. And uh, rather than, you know, kind of translating this all the way over here, which you know can take some time, I'm literally just gonna go over here and to translate X and press zero. And now it's smack dab in the middle of my character. So if I'm looking at the left view, obviously I wanna be able to see the other side. So I'm going to move this back a little bit. 
and when I go into my left view, perfect. Now, if I didn't do that, um, my character would be split in the middle. I wouldn't be able to see it, but if I go back into my perspective view, I wouldn't be able to see this hand if I rotated this forward, like so. So making sure that this is also back here, okay? Perfect. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. See with my reference, zero that out. Translate. Like so. Perfect, okay, so now with that done, uh, I'm going to go back into my left view. And obviously, like, my character is not in the same poses. Now, that's okay. You're more than welcome to just have this as a reference if you wanted to, as you're animating your character. I have done it in the past. Um, as you get better and better, uh, sometimes it's just nice to have a reference, just so you know, like, okay, this pose is the contact, this one's um, the passing, and this one's the up pose. But uh, if you're starting out, I highly recommend changing the size of the reference to match your character size. And uh, obviously this character is way, way, um, way, way bigger. So I'm going to get it as close as I can. Uh, if possible, what I really like to do is try to line up the hips at the very least. So if I'm grabbing this, um, I'd say that's about pretty close to about the size of the actual character. And I just want to get it as close as possible to match the hips. So uh, what I like to do is, if I'm doing reference, is I'll have the character try to match the hip placement as close as possible. Because remember, the core of all movement comes from the hips. So uh, now that I have that, I'm going to check my perspective view again. Looks pretty good. And the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally touching this or animating this, um, especially if I'm in this view, because heaven forbid I, I click on this and I accidentally click on <laughs> the reference and I animate it, it's, just, it's much easier just to put it into a new layer, which I'm gonna create over here, create a new layer and assign selected objects. To make sure that it's in the layer, I'm going to click the little E button. Perfect, it's definitely in the layer. I'm going to keep clicking the farthest right button until it says R for reference. So if I click it R for reference, now it doesn't matter how many times I touch this, I can still um, animate with confidence knowing that it's not going to get in the way. And if at any point in time I need to move this reference down, all I have to do is click the R button so it goes back into its regular view. And then I'm going to shift my pose sheet down like so. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to uh, make this reference so I don't touch it. I'm going to rename this. Let's go ahead and uh, double click on that really quick. We'll call this reference. And then last but not least, before I animate uh, reference, Maya doesn't like spaces, it likes underscores. There we go, perfect. So now that this is referenced, don't have to worry about it. Last thing is I wanna make sure I'm not accidentally animating the mesh. So um, if I click on, I you do not wanna animate the mesh. And as you can see here, there's already a key. I'm going to delete that key. Uh, oh man, it looks like it was already referenced there. Okay, so. Um, I definitely want to make sure this isn't touched any further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this geo to its own layer. And I want to make sure that I don't accidentally touch it. So I'm going to make it a reference layer. This should always stay in your reference layer. And I'm going to name this geo short for geometry. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have that, now that my reference is now referenced, and my geometry is not in danger of being touched, I can now animate this character comfortably. So um, the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna look at the, the key poses that we have for a run cycle. 
The first key pose, just like a walk cycle, is going to be your contact pose. This is when you're falling in space and to catch your fall, you have your contact on the ball so that you can catch your weight and continue to propel yourself forward. So um, just like a bouncing ball, if you're falling, you're going to come down and squish, just like you see in this reference here. If you're falling, you're going to squish down into the passing pose. Then from the passing pose, you're going to the push pose, which is the back leg pushing your body forward. You're basically jumping forward with one leg and you go then to the up pose because again, you're jumping up and what comes up must come down into the contact pose. Right after you make that contact pose, just like a bouncing ball would, you're going to squash down and you're going to continue the rest of this cycle until you get to the next contact pose, which is this one right here. So uh, everyone, please keep in mind, um, this is only half of a run cycle. The other half is technically carrying on the contact into the down, up to the push, really up to the up, and then down to the contact again. All right, so uh, plain and simple, uh, what we're just gonna do is we're going to, uh, again, copy this. Uh, I highly recommend if anyone is really, really interested in pursuing animation, I highly recommend doing this tutorial multitude of times because um, you can never have enough experience with uh, body mechanics, in my opinion. You can always work on your body mechanics. You can always push it further. Even to this day, I am still making sure that I'm exercising my body mechanics before I get too excited about um, anything else. So um, what you can do to make it even easier on yourself is you can just match the reference as close as possible if you'd like. Um, so the first thing I like to do is I like to animate the, the hips and the feet first. This is the core of movement. I will not touch these fingers until the very end. So just so everyone knows my personal general workflow, I prefer to work hips out. So from the hips, I go down to the feet. Um, unless it's FK, then I'll go down to the knee and down to the ankle and then the toes. And then from the hips, I'll go up to the spine, up to the head, and then I'll go to the shoulders, down to the fingers, and I will touch the fingers last. The main reason I do that is because, remember what I said earlier, the hip is the core of all movement. If I end up moving my body forward and I'm like, oh man, I, I just, it's not enough. I should push it even further. Then it's going to completely change my hand placement as you can see here. So if I'm animating my fingers to look really good on the silhouette and then I'm like, oh crap, but my hips are totally off. I should push them more Then, as you can see my fingers move. So I do not even want to think about anything else. Um, up the spine until I know for a fact that I have the rotation correct here. So um, now that I'm looking at that, um, as you can see, uh, I would like to keep it here, but what I want to do is make sure that I'm also giving myself some space to also animate my character coming down like so. But again, I'm not gonna touch that quite yet. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, yeah, at this time, yeah, I'm going to treat it a little bit differently. This time around, I'm only going to tackle the hips and the feet first, because if I know that feels right, then I can comfortably go up to the spine. So this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently than the walk cycle. I'm going to try to hit the leg and hip poses first, and then I'll worry about the rotations of the spine up. So before I get too excited, uh, again, let me zoom out. Make sure everything's in order. Uh, my feet, I wanna make sure that they're not too straight. If they are, you're gonna get this kind of locking motion. And the second you go back from lock, you're gonna get that popping that you see right there. And you wanna avoid that pop. So what we're gonna do is just have a slight bend. So uh, when the character does inevitably move their leg, it's not jarring, it's more subtle. So that looks pretty good to me, like so. And all I'm gonna do is just go down the line really quickly. 
So uh, again, it can be very much assumed that after your contact, just like the bouncing ball, you're gonna come down into a squish or a squash. So if I'm squashing, I should absolutely be moving my hips down. And as you can see, this is also a passing pose. So my leg is going to be passing one another. So let's go ahead and again, try to get the hips as close as possible. Uh, I'm going to make sure that my first keyframe is keyed before I get too excited. Um, another thing you want to do is make sure that you have all the keys that you want animated selected. I'm going to animate everything except for the main controller down here. Do not animate the world controller, the one at the very bottom. You only want to animate everything above that. And the reason being is because if you're, if you're making a video game, the video game processes the location of the character based on this world controller that you see here. If this world controller or the character moves off of this world control, then the game will not be able to understand or process where the character actually is. So you wanna make sure that the character stays on the world control and you wanna make sure that you do not animate the world control. Okay, so let's go back to our left view. Again, uh, I want to make sure that I have everything selected that I want to be keyed. That's everything I want. So I'm gonna press S on the first key and now I'm going to go to the third Key, which is the down pose. Now, again, this is just a guideline. You're more than welcome to, to mess with these, maybe add another frame just to see what it looks like in between, maybe a push or an up or a, a contact in an up. But um, if you're, again, just learning, I highly recommend following this so that you understand what a successful one would look like. And then I would just practice, practice, practice doing a bunch of run cycles so you can iron out your body mechanics. So now that I have that, I am going to a down pose. So I'm literally just going to be moving my character down like so. If you really want it to be exaggerated, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, I'm gonna keep mine a little bit more realistic. So um, that seems pretty good to me. I like that. Uh, one thing I am noticing is uh, I'm in betweening. Even though I didn't key anything, I do not want that. So I'm going to cut this. Uh, and I'm gonna make sure that my animation settings are correct. So I'm gonna go over to my animation preferences, go to animation. I always worked in blocking first. So uh, make sure you're on weighted tangents. Auto span is supposed to be flat and default out tangent is supposed to be stepped. I always like to work in blocking animation style because it's very reminiscent and very similar to 2D animation. And I would argue that 2D animators have a very good grasp of, of body mechanics and motion, timing, spacing, because you're forced, you're forced to be mindful of it, but there's no animation rig to force you to do it. So uh, it's definitely a skill that I want to continue to develop. So now that I have that, I'm going to save that. Um, and if anyone's done the same, now you have a way to fix it. Um, next thing I'm going to do is, let's see, I don't think I need that frame. No, perfect. But I do want to make sure that these are flat and stepped. So when I do animate, they're going to for sure stay in that way. So uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to drop the hips down again. Perfect. And as you can see, I no longer have that in between. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So, and then next after that, it's just super easy. I'm just going to uh, follow the reference as close as I can. Um, sometimes you, it's much easier rather than, you know, doing this. Sometimes it's just easier just to select your boxes and just press zero, like so. And then you can just move your foot however you like. I might move this one forward. Uh, now, uh, obviously this leg has to go somewhere and it's going to propel itself forward so that it can catch itself on the next contact. So this leg is going to have to come forward like so. And uh, you know, maybe change the angle a little bit. So we've got that. And the 
already it's starting to give itself some life. So remember, um, this time around, I'm not actually animating the rotation. Uh, I just want to make sure that I've got my up and down and my legs correct. And then I'm going to go up into the spine. So um, once I know that the hips and the feet work, then it's so easy to go up to the spine. With that said, there's nothing stopping you from actually um, rotating and just kind of matching the poses, if that's what you want. But as you can tell, it definitely changes the poses a little bit. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, I'm going to go to the next pose. So let's go ahead and unreference this. Perfect, so let's go to the push. Now remember, the push is pushing my body upwards. I'm using this toe to propel myself up into space. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, let's see. Make sure I have the right face. Okay, yeah, so I think I animated off the reference, but honestly, that's, that's okay. As long as I cycle, um, that's really what matters the most. So um, now, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so this is, okay, hilarious. As you can tell, um, my reference has been animated. So to combat that, uh, I'm just gonna delete it, like so. Yep, played all my keys, I should be good. Okay, cool. So um, now that that's been done, I am now going to go ahead and go back to reference, and I'm gonna move this down the line. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have that, let's go ahead and reference this again, and I'm just going to copy the pose. So um, I'm on frame five now, and I want to make sure that this relative to this is actually higher. So there's a couple ways we can do that. I can do it by eye and just kind of do this and then go back and forth, I'm like, okay, yeah, my, my body's definitely further up. Or what you can do is you can go into the graph editor and like here, you can just make sure like, okay, well, as long as this one's higher than this one, I know the body's gonna be higher than that. So um, now that I know that, I don't have to push it up too much higher because I know that it's going to be higher in the graph editor like so. Perfect. So that's done. Uh, I'm going back to this one. And this foot is going to be, again, following back right here. And for this, I'm definitely going to need to animate the toes. So let's go up here. And let's just figure out which controller it is. And really quick, before I get too excited, uh, let me save. Remember to save. Save this as, uh, let's go down, take this to the F, uh, spring 2022, go down to a new folder called Run Cycle. And I can click on that. Save as Maya ASCII. Uh, remember, first name. Rudy Solorzano, underscore, the name of the assignment, run cycle, and then your iteration, 0001, save. Always remember to save. So uh, now that I have that, I can definitely animate this with confidence. So uh, let's just see, perfect. So I can definitely animate on this axis like so. And also the reason why I want to animate like this is I, I absolutely do not want to just kind of do this where I'm kind of rotating my feet to be in the right direction because then it's just going to make things super weird when I spline it. I don't want that to happen. So I want this controller to be as straight and as consistent as possible. That way I know for a fact that it's going to make sure that my animation is much smoother. Okay, so now that I've got that, let's go back to the left view. Okay, perfect. So go ahead and do that. Um, 
kind of tempted to do a roll on the foot. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, no, I'm going to fight it. So, uh, yeah. So just so you all know, uh, there are controllers on this that I could use. However, there have been problems in the past where it has broken the rig on occasion. So rather than deal with that, I'm, I'm going to keep it simple. And I'm just going to um, keep my foot kind of pointed like so. Okay. Uh, and then maybe at the very end, if I want to finesse it, I can do that. So uh, remember, this foot is coming forward into space. So I'm going to move this one like so. And it's, uh, remember it's propelling, about to propel itself forward. So uh, I should just drop that down just a little bit more. so fast that's so crazy animation sorry <laughs> i do that from time to time i'm marveling at the simple movement of literally three images all right now that i've got that done <laughs> let's move forward so uh we've got frame five we're going to go to frame eight now and i'm going to remember unlock my reference so i can move this and now I'm going up into a much higher pose, uh, but rather this time I'm going to use the graph editor to make it higher than my last point. So I'm going to press the S key and I just want to make sure that this one is higher than the last point. And that seems like a little bit too much to me. Again, that's personal flavor, so I'm gonna dock it down just a bit. That feels much more natural. Perfect. Remember, you don't want too much of a jump in between your frames unless you're really, really trying to make it dramatic and, and over the top. But again, there's rules that you wanna to try to follow for that as well. So uh, now that this foot has propelled forward, um, it's kind of launched backwards because I am in the air with some hang time. So now what I can do is um, move my foot upwards like so and rotate. So let me go ahead and select this controller make sure that that one's fixed. Uh, remember, you absolutely don't want to do this where you're like, oh, okay, uh, I'll just move the foot now. And I'll just move it in place exactly where it needs to be. No, you want to try to have the controller match the foot as close as possible so you don't run into like, kind of weird issues. So let me control Z that. Uh, let me zero this out. So I get a fresh clean slate like so. Um, going to rotate like this. Pop that in like so. Perfect. And then this foot is going to come up like so. And it's going to get ready for that contact. So as you can tell, it's incredibly funny just to watch it without any arm or or, uh, or spine movement. But again, I, I want to make sure that the feet and the hips work out first with timing and spacing uh, at the forefront. So now that I have that, I am now going into my next contact. And the contact is going to be coming down. I want to match the contact as close as I can with the last one. But uh, I also don't want it to be necessarily perfect because um, then it's going to feel robotic. I don't want a perfect cycle. I want it to have uh, little variations in between. Those imperfections is, is what really sells um, the animation. So uh, let's go ahead and paste. Sorry, let's paste the hip control. So I'm going to go to the first frame, copy that. I'm going to paste it over to frame number 12. And again, I don't want it to be exactly perfect. So what I'm going to do is just go into the translate and I'm just going to shift this ever so slightly, maybe a little bit down more. So it's not so perfect. 
maybe they uh, rolled their foot when they were younger and their, uh, their back foot uh, on the right side just isn't as strong. And, uh, you know, they get less hang time when they launch off of this foot. So little things to make your character uh, more alive. So let's go here. Yeah, that's pretty good to me. Okay, and a friendly reminder, um, you can also copy and paste your poses on your feet. So um, let's go to the first pose. Uh, okay, so this one, I want to be here instead. So I'm going to copy this frame, copy. I'm going to go to the 12th frame. I'm going to select the opposite foot and I'm going to paste on the timeline. So now I know it's in the exact spot that I want it to be. And uh, let's go ahead and go back to my reference image. I'm going to move it over to this side, like so. And again, I don't want this foot to be exactly perfect. So I'm just kind of lift it up a little bit. Same with this one. I don't want it to match exactly with this one. So by this one, I'm going to do this one by hand. Like so. There we go. And uh, to be honest, as I'm looking at this, I'm probably definitely going to need, uh, I'm gonna to need to change the foot placements, but I'll do that later. Another good example of, you know, hey, what do I do if this happens? Make sure you're obviously you're on the right foot control. On the right frame. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm on this frame now. This is my contact. Probably gonna have to fix my contact as well. Let's do that now. Okay, so um, just so everyone knows, um, what I'm doing is, as you can tell, I'm, I'm floating here, and in the reference it's floating as well, but I really want the contact pose to make contact on the floor. And to do that, plain and simple, I'm just going to zero this out and I'm going to move this until I get rid of a bend or until I get a bend. That way I know it doesn't pop like so. I'm gonna rotate that forward a little bit. Perfect, awesome. Okay, so now when I play this, um, even with just half of it, let me hide this, um, you can really start to see the character kind of moving. So let's go ahead and Turn off the nerve curve and just play it. So I have up until frame 12. Let me cycle that and let's see what it looks like. Super funny looking. <laughs> uh, but again, it's only half of the animation. Let's see what it looks like with the other half. So let's punch it up a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming this is gonna go up to frame 23. So now that I have the first 12, Let's go back to my reference. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Perfect. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the reference back. So let's go ahead and grab the reference and I'm going back to this pose over here. Because remember, right after the contact comes the down pose, but on the opposite side. So um, let me get my hips as close as I can to where I want them to be. Perfect, like so. Um, okay. Awesome. Now that we have that, I'm going to do literally the exact same thing, but on the other side. Now, if you want to, it's completely up to you. You can make it really, really easy for yourself, and uh, you can take some shortcuts. Let me show you. Um, so, uh, let's say, for instance, if you really want this foot to be matching in the exact same spot, you can just go down to your last down pose 
And let's just copy this one. Copy. And let's see, um, the straight leg happens after three frames. So let's see, um, one, two, go here, one, two. And I'm just going to click on this one instead and paste. Yeah, like that. Um, however, I, I generally prefer not to work that way because again, I don't like my animations to be completely perfect. Uh, it's about the imperfections in between that I really like. So as you can tell, I just moved it ever so slightly to kind of give myself a little variation there. Uh, now that that's been done, you can already tell that the animation's kind of been pushed a little bit more. So uh, now, again, down pose, coming down. Like so. Uh, this foot right here, I'm gonna just move this one over like so. Rotate it in a little bit. Super, super easy stuff. Cool. Sorry, sometimes I, I'll just sit down and make sure that the frames are working correctly. All right, so now that that's been done, uh, next is the push. So for this one, I do want to um, copy and paste because uh, it's, it's a lot more subtle, this one. So uh, again, one, two, it's going to be, let's see, one, two, like so. And I'm gonna move my reference down. And I'm just gonna push this one up. And again, for this one, I want to copy and paste, and then I'm going to change it up a little bit. Uh, Cause I don't wanna just kind of guesstimate this one. So uh, this one, we'll just say, yeah, it's a little bit lower, like so. So it's a little bit lower, um, but you know, very slow, very similar. Now that I have that, again, same thing, uh, we're gonna work with our feet. So now that this one has pushed us forward, our back foot, it's now going to be propelling us forward. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and select these frames really quick. Sometimes I get lost. Forgive me. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So we've got our contact, down pose, push, up. Um, wow, did we really go from eight to four like that? Four frames? Wow. Well, that's interesting. We'll see what it looks like. I'm, I'm probably going to have to change this. Just a heads up, everyone. <laughs> that's a lot of frames. So uh, yeah, I guess there's a lot of hang time there. That's pretty nice though, I like hang time. So uh, now we've got the contact, uh, down pose, and then now we're going to the up pose. So let's see, actually this should be straight leg, down, push. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now this one is going to be coming back like so. I'm going to rotate that toe upwards like so. And then for this one, again, uh, I could copy and paste if I wanted to, but I don't want it to be perfect. So let's go ahead and compare and contrast these two. Awesome. Now we have some alternating legs. And the push is going to be pushing us upwards. Uh, same thing. I'm just going to use this. Um, and it just needs to be ever so slightly higher. Perfect. So uh, now that I have that, I got the feet matching. Uh, I'm gonna go down a few frames, uh, 12, let's see, five. Yeah, down five frames, so it's one, two, three, like so. Let's say that's correct, yes. Um, and I'll probably end up having to, to move things here and there. 
Uh, but that's okay. Um, it's okay to kind of goof it up a little bit. Um, for anyone who is animating like this, uh, don't be discouraged if it doesn't look exactly like the end product. That's okay. Uh, what you want to make sure, though, is that you get um, critique and you get eyes on your animation. So uh, now that I have that, uh, let's go ahead and go to the outpost. So let me go to my reference image. And remember, this is going to be coming up. Uh, for this one, I do want to copy and paste the y-axis. So uh, let me, or sorry, the y-translate. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just find the push or the up pose. So the up is at eight, like so. I'm going to copy and paste, like so. Perfect. And uh, I just want this to be a little bit lower, actually. Perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Actually, a little bit higher. I don't want it to be too big, though. That's good. Okay. So uh, now that I have that, I'm going to match the feet. Super simple stuff. So remember, if this foot is coming in, this one is actually not going to be over here instead. So this is, let's see, go back to frame eight. I can't forget that one. From frame eight, I almost forgot to, to launch this one forward. Oh, no, this is not the one. Okay, so remembering to fix the feet here. I'm gonna fix those toes. Because remember, I, I do not want to keep these toes like here. Obviously they're, they're animated from the base, but if I were to move it like so, um, it's totally gonna break my animation. So um, I don't wanna do that. I don't, I don't wanna adjust it you know, according to that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reset my foot to be how it originally was inside here. And when I move it forward, you can see it's, it's stuck in its correct position. And then I'm going to move and rotate this exactly how I want to in the reference. And uh, this applies even if you're doing a video reference and you're not using like a, a 2D reference, um, you also wanna make sure that you're trying to do that too. You don't wanna make your foot controller too wonky because um, I guarantee you when you go into splining, it'll look really, really funny. So um, now that I have that as my up pose, up last but not least is going to be uh, let's see uh, and then pardon me everyone who's watching in advance um, I'm literally processing processing this in my brain as we speak so this is the this is contact this is the down pose this is the up pose let's see up sorry contact down push, up pose, contact after four frames, then after two frames we go into the down pose. Ah, uh, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing the push. Yeah, see? Okay, so <laughs> again, it happened to me. Uh, this might happen to you if you're, if you're trying this method. It's incredibly helpful if you can to, to have everything already ready and processed, um, but that's okay. So again, remember, I have the contact pose, down pose, push pose, into the air, contact pose. I'm doing now the passing pose uh, into the push, and obviously I jumped ahead. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this animation and oh no, I've, I've accidentally uh, made the wrong pose. That's okay. I'm just going to copy this and just paste it over here. 
That's it. Super simple. Um, yeah, so if that ever happens to anyone, just remember, like, oh, you know, worst case scenario, it's okay. <laughs> you can just copy and paste and move things down. Again, one of the benefits of working in stepped is that I can do that. I have the option to do that. So if I'm going back over here, um, let me quickly again look at my reference. Um, so again, contact, passing, push, up, contact, passing, push. I'm just gonna move this like so. Use the that rotation. You know what, make it e even easier, just pressing zero on the y-axis. And as you can tell, like this leg is way too straight, so what I'm going to do to combat that is I'm just going to rotate the toes until I get that back. And actually kind of propel that a little bit more forward. And uh, jump this back a little bit. Perfect. So even Professor Rudy makes mistakes <laughs> uh, it's okay to make mistakes, everyone, uh, as long as you're able to catch them and learn from them. So as I'm doing this again, if I were to do this another time, what I would actually do is I would set out all of my keyframes first on the hip, and then I would start doing the feet. That way I know, okay, I need to hit this at this frame, this at that frame, and this at this one. So always learning. So now when I play this, it's already looking significantly better. So when I go down to, I believe is my next pose here. This one, obviously I want to be higher. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit higher. Try to match this one as close as I can. Perfect, awesome. And then to tie it all up, um, once we go to this pose, Let's see how many frames it take four frames four frames so it takes us four frames one two three four one two three four sorry one two three four frames so i'm going to copy my first pose because it's going to match my my next contact pose because it's a way to seal it all up so one two three four i guess correctly that is my last pose course I accidentally break it <laughs> uh, okay so let's go ahead and find out which one I accidentally duplicated So uh, let me just again copy everything. So remember, uh, this is a cycle. So what we need to do is copy on the timeline, don't copy <laughs> the controls, and then you're going to paste it on uh, the appropriate place, which is the very last frame. So now when I play this, let's go ahead and show my nerve curves. I get rid of those. I'm gonna get rid of my nerve curves. I'm going to hide my reference just so I can see the animation. And when I'm playing this, um, I actually want it to be playing on 22 frames instead of 23, because I don't want that extra frame. Super weird. <laughs> so um, really what this needs is it needs more of those in-betweens, especially right here. So, but if I were to play this, let's go ahead and select my controllers just to see what it would look like if I were to spline this. And you know what, even if it doesn't look good, that's, that's okay, because I can refine and change it by adding more frames if I feel necessary. So um, even if you follow some other reference and it's just, it's not hitting right, it's okay. You're always more than welcome to change it up. So uh, let's go ahead and frames in here. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to spline them. Let me select the 
sheets. As you can see, we're still running into some blocking here. Um, okay, so yeah, this is going to be the troubleshooting part of the of the uh, the animation. So if anyone is running into something like this, and again, I'm, I'm not at all surprised. This happens all the time. I animate, um, or every time I animate beat controllers. Um, let's make sure that this is also that's good. Good. This is good. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay. Making sure that everything is actually keyed. So let me go down the line. S. 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 As you can tell, there's already some missing frames there. So if I go back into this now, and let's just see what happens um, when I try to spline this. It already looks much, much better. So uh, let's see. stuff here. Okay, so uh, yes, here is a prime example of um, of the feet, you know, being a little weird. So uh, obviously, what I would do here is honestly just kind of fix it. I would go down the line and just start fixing things. So um, obviously, this isn't hitting the way I want it to. So here's a prime example of, of uh, you know, me looking at the reference, and obviously I did something wrong. Uh, if I'm looking at this uh, on frame five, if I were to look here, um, so I'm not sure why my foot is doing this. Um, actually, I do know why. It's because I didn't key everything the way I was supposed to early. So now if I play this, rotate it at all. And see how that feels smoother? Well, that's way, way smoother. So again, if you're watching the actual tutorial for this one, um, they do a much better job at, uh, at articulating arcs on the feet. But as you can tell, even though I followed the reference, um, it's still something that I need to finesse and fine tune. So now that I have this done, it looks so much smoother. So uh, now that I've got that, um, again, let me, now that I'm in my cleanup for this part, what I actually wanna do is I wanna make sure that I go here into my animation and instead of flat, I wanna go to auto and I wanna go back to auto as well. So there we go, there's that. So um, this is actually a, a really a good opportunity to kind of show everyone like, hey, you know what? I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I was told and it just still didn't come out the way I wanted to. That's okay. Um, the only thing you have to do is just kind of like pinpoint what feels weird. And obviously those feet were feeling weird and I was able to fix them, no problem. Uh, I'm still getting kind of that blockiness. So let's figure out what that's coming from. So let me just click on this controller here. And you can see, I think it was, yeah, 
as the translate that was giving us some weirdness. Just kind of stopping on frame 12. So let's check out frame 12. Perfect. All right, let's go to frame 12. Let's check this out. Okay, so uh, I'm getting this weird kind of popping sensation here. So uh, my foot's coming um, and it's not really moving anywhere. So let's just see what happens if I were to auto spawn this. So that's weird, I'm not sure why it's not moving. <laughs> so this might be one of those hilarious things where I'll actually have to hand key. Um, that's kind of challenging though, because if, if you're not familiar with hand keying things, I don't want to, um, I don't want to have anyone kind of run into any issues. See, like, oh man, that's kind of a bummer. So um, it's awesome because I was able to fix it, but I don't want anyone to also interact with that kind of trouble either. Um, yeah, screw it. I'm, I'm going to hand key. <laughs> it's just the way it's going to be. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, honestly, uh, if I'm running into problems like this, uh, sometimes you might have to brute fortis. Uh, this is where understanding timing and spacing comes incredibly handy. Um, obviously, this is not exactly what I wanted, but um, but because I understand the principles of animation, I'm able to fix this to the best of my ability. So uh, obviously, this is getting stuck here. Um, I want this to move forward. And already, just by fixing that, it feels smoother. So um, you know what? Let's do this. Let's troubleshoot together and I'll explain why I am troubleshooting the way I'm troubleshooting. Um, ironically, me deleting that frame immediately fixed it, which is hilarious. Uh, so you know what, let's see if that does a change too. So if anyone's running into this rig, uh, you might be running into some similar problems. Um, so this is a, an in-between that I had to do myself. Let's see what happens if I cut this one. All right, it automatically does it for me just weird I'm not sure why it's doing that um, okay but you know if it, if it works it works okay cool so um, yeah it, it's kind of a weird thing this rig is doing to me right now um, I've, I've splined it but as you can see I'm running into some problems like right here um, let's just see what happens if I were to move this ever so slightly that's so weird. Okay. <laughs> so if anyone is also running into this, this is the solution I've now found. Um, as you can tell, uh, literally all I had to do was just move it ever so slightly. Okay, so like right here, for instance, it's not moving at all. But if I had to move this like so, now all of a sudden it's, it's now moving the way that I want it to. So, uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, yeah, so if anyone else runs into that problem, keep that in mind. Um, if you are using this rig specifically, I'm not sure if this kind of problem also relates to any other rigs, um, but definitely something to keep in mind. Now that I've kind of ironed that out, um, let's see, what I definitely wanna do is I wanna make sure that this, yeah, I don't know why this is moving so much. Uh, but just so you know what I'm doing here, um, the knee controllers, the pole vectors, I don't want to animate these right now because my character's running in place. I really don't need them to be moving too much. 
um, except for maybe when I'm fine tuning in the front view, but I'm not doing that right now. So uh, let's go ahead and get rid of those. Cut that out, perfect, awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just select these and I just want these to kind of stay in the front here. Awesome. To be honest, they're probably parented to something, um, but I don't want them to move. Yeah, they're gonna keep moving. That's okay, it doesn't matter. Um, luckily, I don't think they're moving too much. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So, uh, yes. So now that I've kind of cleaned up the, the animation, uh, let's go ahead and just turn off the controllers and the reference. And let's just see if this works. So as you can tell, having that extra frame on frame 23 is making it a little wonky. Uh, let's see what happens if we get rid of that frame. So yeah, as you can tell, um, it's giving us a little weird effect. That's something that we can do in cleanup. And just so everyone knows, um, I'll articulate it like this using the graph editor. Uh, as you can tell, my first frame is not necessarily matching my last frame. So what I would do to combat that is I would go to post infinity cycle, uh, pre infinity cycle, make sure it's on for both. Just make sure and do it again. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is view and I'm gonna click on infinity. And as you can tell, uh, they're definitely not lining up with one another. So I'm just gonna can kind of fix this a little bit by fine tuning that and then going here and fine tuning this. So when you do see the animation, it should be a lot smoother than it was before. So let's go ahead and just fix this a little bit further. Like so. Okay, so now when I play this, there should be less snap uh, when I play this out. Cool, go to frame 22, which now should be even smoother. And if I'm looking at one last thing, uh, this, this is the frame that's giving me that pop. I do not want that. <laughs> So uh, again, remembering to look at our animation. I don't know if you all could catch it when you were watching, but um, there is like a little popping right here that I do not want. So again, to combat that, I'm going to push this in a little bit more. Perfect. So uh, that is what was giving me that popping sensation. And now when I do this, it should be significantly smoother when we play it. To verify, let's check it out. And we still got a little bit of poppiness, but it's smoothing over. Perfect, like so. Still got a little bit of poppiness that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, and you know what? I don't care. I'm going to finesse this. Um, again, if this was reality where I was actually on an animation assignment, I'll be totally honest with you. Um, if this wasn't a demo, <laughs> I would be sitting here the entire day. But I, I want to try to keep it as, as uh, short as possible. I don't want to um, drag on too long. Um, but I want to make sure that this isn't popping too much. this one I actually want to lift this up a little bit this down is too down for me and that already feels so much smoother I don't know if you can see it but I feel it um, yeah it just feels so much better okay yeah I feel way more or way better about this. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, that was gonna bug me for the rest of the day if I did not fix that. <laughs> okay, so um, let me copy this, paste it here. So, copy here, and paste.
just there. And uh, I don't know if you can see what I did, but all I did was, um, as you can tell, that poppiness was because my knee was making too large of a pop. It was too much of a hard difference. When I lifted the body up more, there was far less of a bend. So it was giving me far less of a pop. And that's what's giving me this much smoother animation. So uh, again, keeping an eye on timing and spacing. My spacing was too far apart at the bend and it was giving me a popping sensation. To reduce that bend, I just lifted my character up a little bit higher so the knee wouldn't bend so much and it was a smoother animation transition. So now that I have that done, uh, plain and simple, super easy. Uh, I'm gonna go on to the rest of the upper body, but in blocking. So uh, actually, yeah, let me do 10 more minutes of that and then we'll cut for a break and then we'll go back right into it. So um, actually, you know what, let's, let's break here. Um, so yeah, so this will be part one of the running cycle and part two, I'm basically going to be finishing the upper spine and the arms. I'm gonna burn through it really, really quick. And then last but not least, I'm just going to fine tune in the graph editor. So again, I will see you in part two.